go ahead and call the 2023 Hill County Electric Annual Meeting to order. Um, I will, my name is Shane Barrett. I am the president for president, and I will now call on Vice President Leslie Smith to present the invitation. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day and this gathering. Thank you for the timely rain this past week. You provide all our needs. May we be good stewards of all the gifts that come from you. We pray for our members who can't be here today for health reasons. Grant them comfort, peace, and healing during these times. Lord, be with all those who keep our electricity safe and reliable, especially our linemen. Be with our management, staff, and board of directors in all our decisions, especially those to keep the power affordable to all our members. <coughs> Bless the food we will share together and the hands that have prepared it. May it nourish our bodies so we may be able to better serve you. I ask these things in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, if everybody, please rise and play the lead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to give the uh, numbers, the members for the club. Thank you. Uh, we have 54 members present. It, uh, designate, I declare a quorum. Uh, a list of members will be present at the administrative office if you so desire. Thank you. I will now call on Nick again to read the notice of annual meeting. The 78th annual meeting of members of Hill County Electric Cooperative Incorporated of Haver, Montana will be held Saturday, May 13th, 2023 at 10 a.m. in the ballroom of the Student Union Building on the campus of Montana State University Northern in Haver, Montana to take action on the following matters. The election of two trustees of the cooperative, voting may occur via mail or in person, passing upon reports of officers, trustees, and committees for the year 2022, transacting such other business as has come before the meeting and any adjournments thereof. The following members have turned in petitions to run for their prospective districts in accordance to the bylaws. District 2, Trevor Standing Rock of Box Elder, and District 3, Leslie Smith of Red Hair, Montana. The person or person to whom this notice is addressed indicates that the name in which the membership is carried. Voting must be done by the member, or in the case of the joint membership, by only one of the joint members. Registration for the business meeting begins at 9 at MSU Northern Student Union Building. The business meeting will begin at 10 and the buffet lunch will begin immediately following. But now ask for a motion and approval for the notice of annual meeting and affidavit of mailing. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Those opposed? I would now entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of last year's annual meeting. Make a motion. We have a motion. Is there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, those in favor? Now I'll call on Nick to go ahead and uh, give a little report. 
It's really glad to see you all here. Thank you for coming to your co-op uh, and the meeting. It's good to see you all. I had a speech about this long prepared, but like you, I'm hungry and want to get to the buffet. Uh, and most of it you've heard before, so I'm just going to say I'm really thankful that you're uh, involved in your co-op. Um, I ask that we all be more involved in issues uh, that are going to affect us in the future, can affect us in the future. We need to be vigilant. Uh, some, they think they're well-intentioned people, uh, are, uh, we got to keep an eye on some people that think that, uh, for instance, hydroelectric dams uh, aren't vital to this uh, area and uh, and we'd like to see those breached. Um, there's a lot of uh, national issues that that we gotta we gotta keep on uh, our legislators uh, to hear our voice because uh, it's kind of unique up in this country. And uh, I want to I'm an optimist that we're gonna get to someday like the old Merle Haggard song, uh, Rainbow Stew, drink the free bubble up of Rainbow Stew. But uh, until we get there, we need a balanced energy portfolio uh, to survive in this region. Uh, you know, you guys know that it gets 40 below and, and uh, have us, we're, we're in the news a lot for being the hottest in the nation too. And we're gonna have a hard time without electricity. Um, I'm, a, I'm a believer in renewable resources when it works. Uh, when the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining, we need base load energy. Uh, we can't we can't live in a society like we are without it. So I ask that we all be involved in. Uh, let's make this transition gradual. Let's not get the cart before the horse. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I would thank, like to thank you all for coming to your 78th annual meeting. And to quote Fritz Keller, our beloved past board member, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule, schedule to be at your meeting. It's a busy time of year. He said that every year. <laughs> Um, this morning, I would ask that you take the time to go to the information tables set around the perimeter of the room today. Our staff are at each one to answer any questions you might have on different areas of the cooperative. One in particular is on demand, or peak, and demand billing. And Jim and Warren will be happy to visit with you about any concerns. They have prepared an illustrated poster, or several posters, I see to help understand this topic better. And in my simple mind, demand is just don't use everything at one time. Kind of spread your use of electricity to um, different times of the day, and then your peak will be less. But, but we, need, we need to know what the peak is going to be, because we have to supply that peak to our customers. In closing, I'd like to thank all who took the time to send in the mail in ballot. I appreciate your vote of confidence in me. I look forward to serving you for another three years. The entire board is always available for any concerns you may have. Our very knowledgeable staff keeps us updated to make good decisions on behalf of Hill County Electric. As always, we strive to keep your power safe, reliable, and affordable. Enjoy the meal and hope you win the door prize. Thank you. <laughs>
I'm really glad to see so many people here. We were kind of worried with the late spring that everybody would be too busy to get here. But it's good to see all of you. And I just wanted to say that every day that passes now, we are setting a record at Hill County Electric. We have had almost three years of accident-free or lost time accidents and that that's a record it's just amazing to see the the people that are are embracing the concept of safety they are really working at it and they are doing a great job and i guess that's that's about all i have to say um thank you all for coming it, we really appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. I let all those guys speak because now there's not much left for me to say. They pretty much covered everything. Um, I do want to thank everybody for taking your time out of your day. Uh, it's been a, a late spring for everybody, and um, I know everybody's got field work and stuff to be done, but hopefully, the rains keep coming. Uh, we don't want to have a repeat of last year. Um, it was, uh, as most of you probably read in the mailing, that put a lot of uh, stress on where our power comes from. And it, it with the dams, with lava and stuff, is a, a major thing. So hopefully a lot of the rain and the snow we have will, will put some improvement in that. Um, I'd really like to thank our staff too, our linemen, uh, the inside staff, Jim and Warren, uh, Bethany and all the, the the gals inside there. Without those people, uh, for one, this meeting wouldn't get put together. Uh, they do a fantastic job. Our linemen are we have I would say some of the best there are. They doesn't matter what the weather is; those guys will be out there if we need them. So uh, that's about all I have. Just thanks everybody for coming and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here. Craig Gates, CEO of Hill County Electric, give his report. Thank you, Shane. Um, welcome again to the 78th meeting. Uh, it's great to be out of COVID. Let's hope that uh, bug doesn't make its return. Um, I want to thank the membership for another great year. We can't do this without you guys, and we are here to serve you, so I do appreciate it, and the board appreciates it. You guys have a great board uh, in the fact that every meeting we talk about, it's, it's what's good for the membership. How are we keeping rates low? How are we keeping the power on? It? So you couldn't ask for better people to serve you. I want to thank our employees and our linemen uh, that you've already heard it. Our linemen are second to none. I believe I said that last year as well. Those guys are great. They go out every every type of weather. They don't, they don't bat an eye. And you know what? We get a sleep. They're still out there working hard, so I really appreciate it. I also appreciate the employees here today who helped put this on. I thank you guys for doing that. Uh, as Shane said, it couldn't be done without you guys, so I truly appreciate it. Um, I want to thank the retirees that are here today, Ron, uh, Ron Larson, Chuck Schotsky, Schotska. I'm sorry, I'm horrible reading the names. Just ask for the right um, Jerry Kinsella. And uh, of course, Berlin is here, so thank you, Berlin. And Cal Long, thank you. Uh, and I also want to recognize um, there's three guests here today as well. Mark Lambert, who's walking over there. Um, Russ Temple, who you know is our, one of our senators. And then Rick McCorney is here from the Triangle Board. So thank you guys for coming. And Rick's also a member, so he's double covering that. Uh, Uh, also, this is why I have notes this year. I want to thank my wife Suzette, so I don't forget that ever again. <laughs> but good on this. Jackie Homestead also, thank you, sorry. Um, so, so uh, I want to thank my wife again, and I love you, Suzette, thank you. Um, at Hill County, 
we, you know, we're proud of our scholarship winners. Uh, we have some here. We also have a, uh, one of the uh, people who won the trip from the youth tour here to speak today. So that would be great. Um, we also started a new program called Teacher Appreciation. And one of the things that it's very hard for us to do here is keep teachers in our rural schools. So we started a little, it's not really a scholarship, but it's a very small stipend that we give them. But it shows our appreciation so that they can use that money however they feel. Most of them use it for their school supplies, but you know they can keep it or do whatever. And um, it has really taken off, and the teachers really appreciate it. So I want to thank the board for doing that, because without teachers in our schools, some of these schools would have to well, they'd be a really hard time to not have people to teach, so we're, we're really proud of that. Um, Mark Majors will share that we've had another good year. We do need to be cognizant of where our revenue uh, majority comes from. 50% of that comes from one member, our pipeline, and 28% comes from you guys. The rest is made up of uh, commercial and um, irrigation. So. Mm -hmm. We really do appreciate it. We spend about $2 million a year in construction. Uh, we do that so that we can continue to, to thwart major outages. If you haven't noticed in the last few years, some of the storms that we've had have uh, not destroyed our plant as they have in the past. Jim and his team have been doing an awesome job of keeping up with that. Um, we actually now, we used to replace poles pretty much based on their age or known being bad, and now we test all the poles over a 10-year period, and we remove those poles that we do know are bad. So that, that has helped significantly. Um, President Barrett talked about it for a quick second on the drought. So with the drought came through WAPA, who is our Western Area Power Authority, where we receive our power, uh, a drought adder. Now that drought adder is a way for them to add to our bill in years of drought so that they can go out on the market and continue to purchase power if they don't have it for the dams. So that's a very important uh, thing. But the good news is, is that uh, at our G&T, Central Montana Electric, and if you've been to these meetings before, I'm sure you remember Doug Hardy. He can't be here today, but he, he is our uh, G&T manager. Um, and Shane sits on that board. And they have elected to uh, make sure that that adder is not passed on to you this year. So I think that's great that the board has selected not to uh, pass that on in uh, this year's rate increase. So there is, there is no rate increase, which is great. Uh, in the dams, I know that Nick also talked about this for a second. You know, WAPA provides a majority of our power. And that power all comes from dams. So, uh, and as he said, good intentioned people don't always understand the consequences of their actions. And so there may be times when we ask you uh, for grassroots efforts. So if we don't have your email or you don't uh, check our Facebook page, please do or give us that so that we can call upon you to help with our grassroots efforts when they do happen because believe it or not, if you're not involved, it doesn't work. Um, so the other secondary power supplier is Basin Electric, and Basin, uh, I just wanted to cover here because Nick kind of touched on this with renewables. So Basin uh, Power is a co-op, and they're out of North Dakota, and we belong to that co-op. They provide their power through 38% by coal, 24% by wind, 17% by natural gas, hydro is 4%, other sources 3%, and then what's made up of the rest of that is bought out on the market. Now why that's important is because although it shows 24% of wind available of their total, that wind is only available 17% of the time when it's called upon a peak. So what that means is when it's really below or really cold outside, or really hot, and the loads are high, basin can only rely on that wind power 17% of the time. So when you hear about renewables, and, and, and we need them, and we do need the all of the above, but um, wind is not the be all end all, and solar isn't either. As we all know, if you look outside today, 
uh, solar panels are not going to be charging much. And they only work in the daytime, you know. They don't work at night at all. So we have to remember that. And where we go from here, because that's always the question, huh? if renewables aren't the answer, then what do we do? Well, and looking around the crowd, you all are going to understand what I'm going to say. Um, nuclear is the answer. And it's not the old nuclear. It's not the Three Mile Island, it's not Chernobyl, it's not Fukushima. It is uh, new modular reactors that are coming online. Now the bad part is it's still taking us 10 to 30 years to get these things approved. So hopefully, uh, I, I believe in the next few years you'll probably see legislative pressure because even those people who are well-intentioned have finally figured out that wind and solar are not the sole answer to the carbon CO2 issue, um, you'll start seeing people push for nuclear. And just realize this isn't the old nuclear that's going to melt down. These modular reactors are actually built in such a way that they, they won't do that. So we, we need to make sure that we all endorse that when it comes, because if we want to keep the lights on, no matter what the time of day is, time of year it is, what kind of weather it is, nuclear is going to be our only solution at this point. Hydrogen is thought about, but it's still not been successful. Um, next up uh, behind me is uh, Mark, and then uh, Mark Lambert will come on after that. Mark will talk about uh, the legislative session that just ended and some other issues that are upon us. He is from Mecca. That's another website that you can look at uh, and, and look to see what's going on there. So I just want to wrap it up that uh, thank you all for being here. If you have any questions, as always, please call me, come see me, whatever, anytime. Um, my home phone's even listed in the book. So uh, if you need questions or have questions, please call me. And also, uh, Shane took the thunder of the uh, Mother's Day. It used to be Merle all the time. So but that's great. So all of you here that are mothers, have a happy Mother's Day tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, the Hill County Electric CFO to deliver the 2022 financial report. Alrighty, good morning everyone and welcome to this year's annual meeting. Uh, we'll just take a few minutes to go over Hill County Electric's financial statements for 2022. If you want to follow along, there are little booklets that were on your tables and they're on pages 6 and 7. Um, we'll start with Hill County Electric's balance sheet. It remains very solid. We ended the year with total assets of almost $40 million. A good indicator of the strength of a company's balance sheet is its equity ratio. And Hill County Electric ended 2022 with an equity ratio of 51.4%. Another balance sheet ratio we like to keep an eye on is our debt to total assets ratio. This ratio was 42.4% for 2022. Both of these ratios indicate cooperative is in good position financially. In 2022, Hill County Electric invested almost $2.6 million back into our plant. A few of the larger projects in 2022 included, we replaced 17 and a quarter miles of underground cable in multiple projects that were south of Rudyard and south of Hingham. We installed step downs on over three and a half miles of underground cable north of Haver. This helps extend the life of the cable. We rebuilt the 69 kV air brake switch and fuse station south of Chester, and the crews replaced over 240 poles throughout our system. And those were just a few of the many projects that Hill County Electric crews were working on in 2022. Next, we'll take a look at the operating statement. As you can see, 2022 was a good year for Hill County Electric. Our total operating re revenues were comparable to 2021 at over $17.6 million. On the other side of the ledger, our expenses increased by about 1.1%. So with our revenues at over $17.6 million and the slight increase in our expenses, our total margins ended the year at $1,357,759. The margins we generated allowed us to return to you, our member owners, over $530,000 in capital credits during 2022. 
and we will be mailing out another 2,200 checks next Friday for a total of another $470,000. Uh, that was just a quick summary of the financial position for Hill County Electric for 2022. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them at this time. Seeing no questions, I'll turn this back over to Shane. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, now I'll introduce Mark Lambrecht from NECA. Uh, it's our statewide organization that all of the co-ops uh, throughout Montana belong to, and he'll give a report. Well, good morning, everybody. Had a beautiful drive up from Helena this morning. It's so nice to see the green. Uh, boy, we had a, a really, really busy session, but I want to recognize a couple of people first. First is uh, Senator Russ Temple. I want you to know how hard he works. He has a, a really key position on a very important committee for all of us, which is the Senate Energy and Telecommunications Committee. And uh, I usually sat just down the hall from him where his office was and outside the, the committee room. And I'm there early every day, late every day, and he stays even later than I do. So I just want to let you know he, he did a great job on your behalf. Also want to recognize Craig Gates for talking to me every single week during the session and uh, giving me advice on different bills and technical information that was really important. So thank you for your patience with all my questions, Craig. Uh, so we had three priority bills that uh, MECA drafted and saw through completion during the session. The first of which was designed to protect our linemen throughout the state of Montana. So you as a motorist, you would recall that you are required when you encounter an emergency vehicle with flashing lights to, whenever possible, slow down and move on into the other lane uh, to protect the life and safety of those emergency workers. But we thought it was really important to provide that same level of protection to our linemen. And so we were successful in getting overwhelming bipartisan support and the governor's signature on House Bill 320, which was the move over law. So now it is your responsibility as a driver when you encounter a utility vehicle with an amber flashing light to do the same thing, slow down and move over. We had a really, uh, really fun bill signing day. We had three bucket trucks parked out in front of the Capitol uh, in conjunction with National Lineman Appreciation Day. 21 co-op linemen from around the state of Montana came for the bill signing ceremony with the governor, where the governor and, and the two uh, bill sponsors were provided uh, linemen hats with stickers from the co-ops from all over the state of Montana. The linemen were recognized in the, uh, in the gallery of the House of Representatives. It was quite a day. Uh, another priority bill was House Joint Resolution 6. So you may recall a couple of years ago when we had a really bad storm in Texas froze and uh, their infrastructure just didn't really hold up. Well, that actually had repercussions all the way up here in Montana. Uh, and the, the problem is that we're experiencing less and less, as, as Nick described, baseload electricity generation. That's the type of electricity that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's usually provided by coal or hydroelectricity. And as we're, we're closing down coal plants, we're not building new baseload generation, we're, we're relying more and more on intermittent renewable generation. It's creating a problem in reliability of our electric system. So what happened here in Montana is uh, a lot of the baseload generation in, in the southern region, in that southern market was being pointed toward that, that area that was experiencing problems, making less baseload generation available here. It almost led to rolling blackouts in the state of Montana. In fact, uh, we were within 30 minutes of that situation. We would like to avoid that situation from ever occurring again. And so this bill approved an interim study of the legislature to find out exactly what happened here and how do we prevent that from happening again. Uh, some of the ideas on the table are uh, for utilities and our wholesale transmission customers to purchase uh, power contracts above their peak load demand, and then also uh, allow them additional flexibility in curtailing their, lessening their demand uh, in certain situations. 
A uh, couple of speakers up here have talked about dams and how important they are. So we've passed a, a resolution of the legislature opposing the breaching of the Snake River dams in southeast, southeast Washington. This is a proposal that came out a couple of years ago to breach the four dams on the lower Snake River uh, to help with salmon and steelhead recovery. And so this issue has become a, a hot button nationally. Uh, the legislature overwhelmingly uh, approved the resolution opposing that uh, because that electricity uh, plays a huge role in supplying uh, power to more than 220,000 Montanans. It's carbon free. Uh, there's been $16 billion invested from uh, uh, co-op and utility customers throughout the region in salmon and steelhead recovery, and it's working. Uh, but a lot of people ask me, what, what good does it do to have the Montana legislature take an opinion on an issue like that? Does it make a difference nationally? Well, I can tell you emphatically that it does. I was in Washington, D.C. a couple of weeks ago. I met with Senator Daines to talk to him about this issue. The very next day, he was growing the energy secretary before the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. And he asked me to, to give him a question that he could ask her. Boy, did he ever really give it to her about that, that issue. And so the next day after that, a couple of my colleagues uh, from Northwest River Partners also met with members of Congress. And they, they showed them this resolution that came from the state of Montana and was, and was signed by the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. It also achieved near unanimous support from Montana's Native American Caucus. And Senator Cantwell from Washington, once she saw that, she said, boy, this is a difference maker for me. So it does have an influence what we do here in Montana on the national stage. Uh, we did have some challenges that uh, didn't go quite our way in the session uh, with House Bill 55. Uh, there was a, a bill that passed to assign an electric vehicle tax in the state of Montana. And the idea there was to try to uh, have electric vehicle owners contribute to road maintenance and repair in the state of Montana, just like you do as an motorist with the, with the gas tax. So we were successful in attaching an amendment that uh, exempts residential chargers from that tax, but uh, there will be a, a tax assigned uh, at the at the charging station. And the, uh, the, the issue that we had is the co-ops and the utilities were assigned the responsibility of being the collectors and the reporters of that tax. So that's going to be a challenge for us to uh, to make our way forward on that. Uh, just to wrap up a couple of things here, um, we're always looking to protect the interests, the business interests of co-ops. Uh, we were proud to have had a, a significant role in the passage of Senate Bill 54. Uh, this is a centrally assessed tax. Uh, this is the tax on power lines, pipelines, things like that. And so the, uh, the Department of Revenue requested this bill to to assess those tax changes every other year rather than every year. That uh, helps them with, with staff savings and other cost savings. Uh, the problem there is that the current law had a really quick turnaround time of 15 days for when a new valuation of a, of a centrally assessed property is sent out and when a co-op co might have to respond to that if they're objecting to that valuation. If they don't get that, value, get that response back in time, uh, then you go into uh, a legal situation with the department. So we, were, we attached an amendment that extends that response time up to 20 days plus an additional 10 days upon request. So we were happy about that. Uh, another one is uh, last year the uh, federal government imposed new regulations on commercial driver's licenses programs. And there was a lot of misinformation that went around on the internet about the expense of this program or or how difficult it would be to for a driver to, to get that CDL license or or uh, have their have theirs renewed. So it led to some drama in the legislature. Um, there was a bill sponsored by Senator Manzel out of Hamilton and uh, sponsored by the governor that would adopt these new this new federal program so that we could have commercial driver's licenses in, in Montana. They killed the bill, brought it back, killed it again. <laughs> but, 
Uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we supported the two bills that kind of came together and, and adopted this federal program. We were really happy to see that uh, the Montana Department of Transportation agreed to take on uh, a huge role in this in training drivers for no cost. And so this is going to be really important for co-ops throughout the state of Montana, whose linemen and some other employees need that CDL license to do their jobs. Um, let's see, you, you may have uh, read about a recent district judge decision out of Billings that had an impact on a planned development of a natural, uh, natural gas electric generation station in Laurel. And so the judge took it upon himself to go outside the law, in my opinion, and vacate the, uh, the air quality permit for the facility based on his opinion that uh, they should have done a thorough greenhouse gas emissions analysis for the plant, both in-state and out-of-state, which is not what was required under the permit, not what was required under the law. So uh, the legislature uh, did the right thing. They passed a couple of bills that would undo that judge's decision. And so one is under the Montana Environmental Policy Act, it would require any, any party who make such a legal challenge in that case would have had to do so back in the, at the permitting stage of the agency. And then the other one is uh, prohibits the Department of Environmental Quality from having to do such analysis for greenhouse gas emissions unless required to do so by act of Congress. And so uh, we were happy to see that. A uh, couple of other things that, that were dangers that were avoided. There were several different bills that were addressed at improving property rights in Montana, but, um, you know, with a lot of unintended consequences. Each one of these would have uh, harmed or taken away the ability of cooperatives to use uh, prescriptive easements. And so, as you know, co-ops have been around for 80 years. A lot of uh, the infrastructure and power lines are constructed on farms and ranches or other properties through a handshake agreement for which there was no recorded easement and so this would have invalidated a lot of those agreements and uh, co-ops would have been unable to go in and maintain or, or replace uh, that infrastructure so uh, Mecca was uh, specifically involved in helping shed light upon those those issues and making sure that those was going to come up but um, it was a busy session and uh, I think a successful one I uh, was glad everybody went home though uh, it's nice to catch my breath, but I encourage you all, uh, like Craig said, you know, become involved in, in the grassroots effort. It's so important for the legislators to hear from you, their constituents, about the issues that really matter uh, out here throughout the state of Montana. But thank you so much, and uh, hope you all have a nice Mother's Day tomorrow, and hope to see you again soon sometime. Thank you. Uh, we did have one retiree uh, here that was missed uh, by Craig there, uh, Jim Rollette. I'd like to thank him for joining us today. Uh, and now we have a short video presentation. Twenty-five years ago, I was working out at the mines in Zortman, Montana and they were closing shops, so I decided right then and there that I needed to find something a little more stable. And I had some buddies that were doing this, and so I went to Bismarck, North Dakota, and went to a line school there for a year and started working out in the trade. Had family in the trade, and it sounded pretty interesting. I mean, what is life at without electricity these days, you know? It's something that'll never really go away, so. I actually went through the contract side of things. There's several different ways to get into the into line work or get into an apprenticeship. The route I took was through the contractors. I was told I did about 120 tests for my apprenticeship. It's kind of hard. Yeah, it takes time. It takes effort. 7,000 hours. Yep. A certain amount of hours need to be in different different aspects of line work: transmission, substation, uh, distribution, underground. Most people pass, but in order to pass here, you got to have the, the drive, the want, the ambition. You can't be lazy. You got to be willing to get out there and go to work. 
because our work is, it's, it's hard. It's enjoyable. But so long as you're out there getting, getting dirty and working your butt off, you're gonna be just fine. I mean, there's definitely times where there's a lot more brute force that's, that's involved than there is the thinking through the aspects. You know, a lot of that stuff that we do have is engineered. So a lot of it is just put your head down and work hard. But at the same point in time, you, you gotta have your head on your shoulders and you gotta, you gotta stay with it because you can definitely get hurt. I like the diversity of the job. The, you could be reading meters one second to chasing storms the next, and you just never know what what's going to be around the corner. It's different every day. I was out the other night and it was 25 below. There was about a 30 mile an hour wind, so I'm not sure what that wind chill was, but we were out from nine o'clock at night and I think we got back into the shop between three and four in the morning. I don't know, I like to see people be grateful for, you know, what we do too, you know, it's when it's doing this outside, when it's cold and blow, blowing or, you know, it ain't much fun to go out and that stuff, but when people express gratitude, it's like, okay, I, this is kind of why I got into this trade, you know? It's not an easy job a lot of days for these guys, so I'd like to thank those guys again. I'll now call on Lauren Keys to run the election for the trustees. Good morning. I'm a lot shorter than everybody else up here. <laughs> So my name is Byron Keyes. I'm an attorney with Jackson, Murdo, and Grant, and I have the pleasure of being the attorney who works with Hill County Electric Cooperative. So today we're doing the election of trustees, and there were two districts up for election this year, district number two and district number three. Due to some bylaw amendments over the past few years, uh, trustees now, nominees for trustee positions, are only by uh, petition. So the petitions have to be submitted before the annual meeting so everybody gets a chance to vote, whether via the mail-in balloting or here in person. So this year there were only two nominations by petition, one per each district. We had Trevor Standing Rock, who was nominated for District 2, and Leslie Smith, who was nominated for District 3. So normally we ask the candidates to make a, a statement. So Ms. Smith, would you like to make a statement? Thank you for your um, confidence in me. Um, I yes, I know I got some votes. <laughs> so, and I hope I can I can continue to do the job that, that I'm required to do, and um, I'll do my best. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. So under the bylaws, we are allowed to dispense with voting where the number of nominees for each open district doesn't exceed the number of positions that are open for election. This year, that's exactly what happened. We have one nominee for each position. And I'll also note that we did receive 284 mail-in ballots before the deadline as well. So we've met the voting quorum with the number of ballots received. So with those two facts in mind, the number of mail-in ballots we've received and that we only have one nominee per open position, uh, do we have a motion to dispense with the voting today? And do we have a second? Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of dispensing with the voting for the in-person uh, trustee election, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say nay. All right, the motion is passed. We're going to dispense with the in-person voting on the trustees today. Do we want to name then with the mail-in ballots? There's no surprise here. For district number two, Trevor Standing Rock will be the trustee. And for district number three, Leslie Smith will be the trustee.
Hello all, I'm Lainey Sadariva and I'm a senior at North Star High School in Red Red, Montana and I was last year's recipient for the youth tour. I would just like to start by saying thank you to Hill County Electric for providing me with the amazing opportunity last summer to go and visit Washington, D.C. Um, it was very well organized and I met a lot of great people that will be some lifelong friends that I've already been in contact with and seen since the trip. Um, some really cool things I guess I saw there, first was the Holocaust Museum. It was really real. I guess you learned a lot. You were not quite taught everything in school that you may think, but it was a really great opportunity just to see it more in person in the real life facts. Um, the changing of the guard at the Arlington Cemetery, that was also really neat to see. And at Gettysburg, there was a circular room with like a painting on it and it told a story as it went through the uh, war, and so I guess that was really cool, and I can appreciate some good art. An interesting side thing, I guess, that I was kind of took me by surprise when I was there. We had a dance with all the rest of the states, and Montana and some North Dakota people were the only ones that really knew what jitterbugging was for it. <laughs> so I guess that says something. <laughs> So when I was there, the Air and Space Museum was closed, but all the other Smithsonian museums were very cool to see. And one thing in particular that was interesting was in the National Museum of Natural History, the Hope Diamond. So I would just like to say thank you again to Hill County Electric for providing me that opportunity last summer. At this time, I will ask if there's any unfinished business to come before the body. Seeing none, is there any new business to come before this body? Seeing none, with no further business to come before the 2020, 2023 Hill County Electric Cooperative Annual Meeting of Members, I call this meeting adjourned. Thank you.